In the late afternoon of November 24, 1971, a man later identified as D.B. Cooper boarded Northwest Orient Airline Flight 305 at Portland International Airport. Cooper had bought a one-way ticket to Seattle and he was wearing a suit, raincoat and sunglasses. The plane was a Boeing 727 scheduled to take off at 2.50 p.m. Cooper took a seat in back of the plane in the smoking section. He ordered a bourbon and a soda and he lit a cigarette. Soon after takeoff, he handed a note to the flight attendant sitting next to him, Florence Schaffner. She didn't think much of it until he whispered to her to read it. The note read, I have a bomb in my briefcase. I will use it if necessary. I want you to sit beside me. What's up everyone and welcome to our YouTube and Facebook channel. If you are watching our channel for the first time, please consider subscribing. And if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up. And now, let me tell you about the unthought mystery of D.B. Cooper. Inside Cooper's briefcase, there was eight dynamite sticks and a detonator. He showed the flight crew the bomb and said that if his demand were not met, he would detonate it. He demanded $200,000 for parachute and a refueling truck at Seattle Airport before 5, in exchange for the safety of the passengers and crew. He also demanded that the pilot fly the plane to Mexico City and he remained in the cockpit with the door locked. At this point, the other 35 passengers on board had no idea what was going on in the flight. Another hair hostess, whose name was Tina McLeod, brought an intercom and sat next to D.B. Cooper so he could communicate with pilot. The flight crew informed the authorities on the ground and the FBI began to negotiate with Cooper. This was the first ever plane hijack in the history of America, so they decided to give him what he wants. Northwest flight, which was scheduled to land in 45 minutes, was circling around the airport for almost one and a half hour. Passengers was informed that because of a technical fault, there is a delay in landing the aircraft. During this time, authorities obtained the ransom money from Seattle National Bank. It was $10,020 notes, whose serial numbers were noted down, and parachutes were arranged from nearby skydiving club, and they arranged for the plane to land at Seattle International Airport at 5.45. Cooper instructed the pilot to taxi the plane to a remote area of the airport and to turn off the runway lights. After the ransom was delivered, Cooper allowed the passengers and some of the crew to leave the plane. He then instructed the pilot to take off and fly to Mexico City at a 10,000 feet altitude and at a speed of 320 kilometers per hour. Pilot informed Cooper that due to less fuel, it is not possible to take the airplane to the Mexico City. So pilot gave him two options for refueling, Reno and Phoenix. And they agreed on Reno. While on their way, D.B. Cooper asked Tina McLeod to go in the cockpit. And when she turned around to close the door, she saw that D.B. Cooper was putting something on his back. Then. The staircase was opened and he jumped out of the plane with the ransom money, never to be seen again. Three hours later, when airplane landed in Reno, it was searched upside down, but the only thing which was found was a tie, eight cigarette buds and the parachutes which he left behind. In 1970s, airport security was not advanced. That's why there was no picture of D.B. Cooper. The FBI launched one of the most extensive manhunts in the history. After interviewing crew members and other passengers, a rough sketch was made of D.B. Cooper. With the help of flight recorder, FBI found out the staircase was opened at 10 past 8. 
With the help of this information, his estimated jump location was defined, which was around 45 square kilometers. Air and land search team swept this area, but they couldn't find a single evidence related to this case. Later on, FBI released the sketch and the serial number of the bank notes to general public and appealed everyone to come forward if they have any information. Surprisingly, not even a single note was ever being used. After nine years, in 1980, a boy walking along the beach called Tina Bar near Columbian River found a rotting package containing $5,800. Boy's parent took that package to FBI and luckily, serial number of these notes matched to the ones D.B. Cooper took. This was the first evidence found in the case in almost a decade. After this discovery, this case became more complicated. The place where this package was found was 27 kilometers away from D.B. Cooper's jump location. First, it was assumed that Cooper must have dropped them in Lewis River, located in the jump location, and this could have carried this package to Columbia River. Soon, they noticed that the Columbia River flows in the opposite direction, so there is no way this package could have come through Lewis River. Over the years, the FBI had received countless leads and tips about Cooper's identity and whereabouts. They have conducted extensive forensic analysis and interviewed numerous suspects, but the case remains unsolved. In 2016, the FBI announced that it was closing the case, but it remains open in the sense that the agency will still follow up on any new leads. Some people believe that Cooper died in the jump, while others believe that he successfully landed and escaped. There have been numerous reported sightings of the man who resembled Cooper, but none have been confirmed. Some have even suggested that Cooper was an inside job, carried out by someone with knowledge of the airline security industry. Regardless of what happened to D.B. Cooper, his daring hijacking and subsequent disappearance have become the stuff of legend. He has inspired countless books, movies and television shows, and he remains one of the most intriguing mysteries in American history. And that's it for today's episode of Let Me Tell You. I hope you find our videos informative and interesting. Let us know about your thoughts in the comments below. We value your feedback and want to hear your thoughts on this topic. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notification so you never miss an episode. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Let Me Tell You.